Boom. Now I see everybody. Yeah. Good morning, Aurora. I like the earrings. Nice earrings today, too. <laughs> Eric's going to connect with audio for an hour. Can everybody hear me? Hey, yeah. hey guys, since we're yeah. getting ready for everybody to set up, uh, uh, if you guys don't have them already, can you guys, I believe that you guys have some bands that was sent to you. Uh, can you guys get those ready? Because we're going to actually be going to be using them at the beginning. So so if you don't have them by you right now, probably is the time to get them. And uh, the tennis balls, of course. Uh, if you guys have a, uh, you, you don't need all of them if you want, but at least one that's nearby as well. So. If you guys don't have those things already, you guys can start getting all your stuff together. And that's about all you need. <clears throat> hey, Zach. We missed you yesterday. Good to see you. Hello. Uh... Somebody's eating over there. Yeah. <laughs> I want to bite. All right. Everybody looks like they're all ready to go. How long are we going to be waiting for? A couple more minutes or what? Uh, no, get, go ahead and get okay. started. Kids will okay, guys. Away. All right, then. So is everybody ready to get started? Having our second day of camp. So how's everybody did yesterday? Did everybody have a good time? I'll try to steal them so we have that. Yeah. Yeah? Awesome, awesome. Well, before we start, I just want to say I'm just so happy to be a part of once again of camp. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a new uh, type of way of, of, of doing our, not only our sports. I mean, we're all kind of, uh, I've heard it all, so to speak. But I wanted to how, what's going on relating to tennis and how I come across and the way we think that we talked about on tennis. Some of the things that we as tennis players, uh, you know, as young athletes on the court, is the same, uh, of, you know, same things that we are trying to do in, in our current time right now. And that is being diligent. You know, as a tennis player, we've got to be diligent and we've got to be proactive. So meaning when we start a point in tennis or when, when somebody hits a ball to us, you know, we got to make choices on the, uh, on the rise, you know, and try to make those quick decision-making process, whether it's our mobility or the type of stroke we are. And just like we're doing on everyday life, we're trying to be diligent, we're trying to pay attention to what's going on every day, and just at the end of the day, always being positive and knowing that, you know, we're never out of the game, you know, and that's what I always call the game, I call life. So with that being said, we're going to start our day with tennis, of, of in the home, obviously, right? And we're going to start our warm up. Since this was the first uh, 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 sport of the morning, we got to do a little warm up, right? But a little bit different warm up than traditionally on the tennis court, where I'm probably going to have you going and doing uh, blind drills or probably, uh, 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 you know, having a big open space. You got to be more proactive, as I mentioned earlier. We're proactive 
and we got to start thinking outside of the box. So with that being said, everybody has a band. We're going to go through some band stuff just real quick. And I know we've all done the band stuff, right? But how do we do it in the home? How do we do it from if we're on our bed or if we're just in our bedroom? We're all in our rooms, right? So, and, and the thing is, how about if you don't have a band, okay? So I'll give you some traditional bands and we all have different types. It doesn't matter. We can have the ones with the hooks. You can have one just as simple as this. But you know what? I'm out of the box. I don't use any of them. You know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use my doggy chain. <laughs> my dog chain, right? So it's just a simple piece of rope. So again, I want you guys to start understanding that from in the home, we've got to make sure that we're thinking outside the box and using the things that's available. So everybody has their band. So how does this pertain to tennis? So I'm going to turn my camera over to, as you see, we all have a desk. Everybody find either a doorknob, something to tie around one end of your band. For me, example, I'm going to use my desk drawer. Okay? There you see that? Some people could use a doorknob. Some people could actually, if you're limited in, just, in the use of, of mobility, just use your chair. Okay, different things, and we've all seen it. But we're gonna do this one, where we're gonna actually isolate a stroke. And we're gonna be isolating our forehand. And again, this is a simple way of getting ourselves nice and relaxed. So for example, my band does not stretch like yours, right? Yours is a little bit more stretched, but that's okay. Because what I am doing is just giving a little pressure and, you, and using the force and I'm pulling my muscles, and you can see in my forearm that I'm actually making a stretch. For some of you that are more advanced or a little bit more athletic, you guys can actually isolate that and do repetitions rep 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 uh, of doing isolated little strokes where you're using your forehand. And again, it's the motion that we're using with our forehand, making our hands out in front and using that shoulder, using that shoulder. For some of us that are obviously we have used special design chairs for our sports, again, that's okay. We're in our everyday chair. The main thing is, and I'm probably doing it improperly, and I always tell all my kids, and I probably use myself as a perfect example, we always must sit up straight and have good posture. That's important and key for anything, especially when we're not in our sports chairs, because I'll be the first person to say it. I'm always relaxing and laying down. But this is the very first thing that we got to be diligent in the way we approach things. So even if we're in the home, again, we're doing a simple stretch. So can everybody do that? So, so try to get your bed, try to have it uh, uh, anchored to something sturdy. Again, it could be a doorknob, it could be into your de uh, dresser drawer, it could be your own chair, but something where you can a uh, 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 shadow a forehand, and just like I'm doing here. Can everybody see that? All right, and again, we're gonna get our nice and forehand start, nice and straight. And look at, I'm pulling my drawer. I'm way super strong. I know I'm pulling my drawer all the way out. <laughs> all right, so we could do this again a couple of times, and just depending how much you wanna uh, uh, put into your stretching or uh, band work. Again, there's as you guys all know, there's different uh, uh, strengths of the band, so it can actually become an actual workout in itself, isolating certain muscles that pertains to specific isolated tennis stroke. So here's one more other one. So again, we're gonna get our band, we're gonna take it off, whatever we had at anchor, and we're gonna have it in front of us, right? We're gonna take one hand behind us, just like this, and I want you to start with your hand that you're actually using your racket. So if you're a right-hander, and you hold the racket with your right hand, let's start with your right hand, your left-hander. So right now, we want to focus on the hand that you would have, that you would be holding a tennis racket. So for me, it'd be my right hand. And we'll go behind. And again, we're getting that stretch. We're pulling that stretch. And if you can, that's a, 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 a try to grab the other end and get that pull. Just like Coach Kerry is showing. See that? You get that nice, good stretch. And again, 
That's giving you that bicep stretch, right? That's giving you that stretch in the back, the feel in your back. Again, if for some of us that has better posture and with back muscles, you can feel it. But this has to do specifically with our serve. And we're going to be doing some cool stuff with our serve uh, in a little bit. So how does that? And again, uh, you guys could take it as much uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, uh, as you want to, you know, prolong it as far as doing uh, uh, different uh, isolated reps. Uh, you can add more the band, the different colors represent the, the strength of the band. So you can do a lot more other. And again, these are all things for you guys, for me to get you guys thinking about thinking outside the box. I know we're out on a court, we're always looking for a fence. Uh, we actually have maybe have the racket in our hand that we could do shadowing a stroke or we're actually pushing. So that is what we're gonna do with the band, okay? Can anybody tell me uh, uh, what's one of the favorite, uh, is there one particular band uh, 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 regiment that anybody, uh, you guys do or that you guys have that you guys find yourself doing because a lot of this band work comes to do uh, uh same round with doing you know our physical therapy a lot of that has to do with our daily stretching and uh you know our pressure release so all that comes into hand and here out of the home so does anybody have a favorite uh a uh, stretch that they like to do using a, a specific band anybody so through. anthony have them raise their hand yeah. have oh, them raise your hands right Everybody raise their hand. So, oh, Suchi's got one. Suchi, what's your favorite? Um, so what I do is um, I take the green band and I put it uh, around my arms and then I do push-ups. And then okay. um, I move my hands a little bit further and then do okay. some more push-ups. And, and that is a perfect example. That's one of our athletes there that is able to, to stand and use her legs. So she actually takes it one more level and she's able to actually stretch and get all of her muscles. And that's great. And those are the type of things I like to hear where you're kind of doing adaptations to what your physicalities uh, and level are. All right, what's our next thing? So we're not done with the, with the warm up. So one of my favorite, favorite roller ups, of course, we all know I love to push, right? But of course, you can't really push, right? Well, here's the thing. I bring the madness to you. So this is something that I like to call a little bit of monkey business. And I use my home as part of my way of getting a little bit of push. So I know that I didn't say anything prior, but for those who want to try or maybe start thinking as you see what I'm doing, remember, use what you got at home. So I'm gonna actually take you out of my bedroom and I'm gonna make my home your court. So are you guys ready to go? Here we go, let's see if I don't drop anything. All right, so I'm gonna, whoa, hold okay. it. So I'm gonna go this way. Uh, let me see if I can know how to flip my screen real quick. Uh, Okay, so this way. Can everybody see? I'm leaving my room. Can everybody see? All right. So I'm gonna start. I I use what I have in the home. Okay. Can everybody can, can everybody see? Uh, this is. Uh, can everybody see what I'm looking at? So I'm gonna drop a broom down. There's one. Okay. I want to drop. <coughs> Drew, seriously, again, <coughs> I'm a one man show, so bear with me. So, as you guys can see, I'm using my house and simple things that I have here in my home, which are brooms. Okay? Now, I'm going to put on the stand here. Okay. Can everybody see me now? Okay, so as you see, I lay down some simple brooms in the house. I have a hall, long hallway doorway. 
I'm going to start my in-home monkey madness a pushing drill just to get me going. But again, I'm just using one example that you guys start thinking what you guys can use. One other example, I did another video. I actually went outside and guess what? I pushed on the lawn. How many of us hate to push on grass, right? But I'm telling you, it's a great workout if you got nothing else. So that's one idea. <laughs> another idea is where I'm gonna start. I hope you guys can still hear me. I'm gonna start my obstacle course using a simple doorway where I can't get through, right? Ah, I can't get through, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm trying to use, trying to, trying to move out. So this is where I'm gonna start my drill, my, my moving obstacle course from in the home. And I'm gonna start backwards. But again, this is for you guys to understand. You guys can make it to whatever is, is, uh, is that tapers to you and that's personal to you using your home and, and things that, that, are, that, there are, that are there that are available at your house. So I'm gonna start, I'm backing up, I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna spin around and I'm coming down. Going over, oh, the first one. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Ah, that goes down the other one. I'm pushing, I'm pushing. That goes down the other one. Then I'm gonna stop, I'm not done. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna do a simple transfer. So I'm gonna go, ah, ah, get me off my chair. I'm sitting down there, everybody see me? And then I'm gonna get back up on my chair. Again, anything that we can use and uh, every day I'm gonna fall right now. <laughs> but again, boom, right there. So that is just one example of using your in home and using the things available. We don't need cones. We don't need a, a, a measuring tape. And we don't need a, all that fun stuff that you see, you know, us always all carry when we're at camp. You know, we use the things that are there in our home. And forgive me, I've already lost the breath already. But uh, again, it's a little bit of workout. So at this time, does anybody, I want some feedback. Can anybody tell me in their home, is there a certain part of the house that you hate to go into because it's either not accessible or the carpet is really, or whatever, that it's just something that you hate because it's not accessible or it's just not easy access. Does everybody have a, have a place in their home like that? I do, my whole house is like that. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so again, it's being able, <clears throat> it's being able to use the things that are there in your home and that you're able to use, to use as, as for your fitness and getting yourself. One of the last things I did show you, and again, I wanted to make sure I showed it, is the transfer. That is so important, guys, for us as athletes who are not able to actually participate and actually have our routines, we need to make sure that we're always transferring, we're always giving ourselves pressure release, and we're doing some type of physical movement. And again, even if it's in the home. How's that sound, guys? Was that fun to watch me? Did, did anybody have any bets that I was gonna fall? I knew I thought I was gonna fall. But anyways, let me go back now to the room and we're gonna start with one of our instructions. All right, so you can see me going through and I'll flip around. All right, now we're back to my room. Blah blah blah. <clears throat> well, now I, I don't know about you guys, but I already need a, I already need a rest. <laughs> so how does that sound? Did, did some of you, did I get you guys to start thinking about, you know, your own home and certain things that you guys can use that are available uh, uh, in your home when you don't have access to, uh, to whatever it may be that, that helps us, gets us active and moving. Okay, and that was the whole idea of my introduction right now of whether it's using bands or using things in the house to get us going. All right, so one of my first things that we're gonna able to do and this is something that we always try to do at camp. And every year I always say to myself, I gotta, I gotta put emphasis in it because I know everybody likes to play, everyone's at the ball. But what is the one thing, guys, 
in the tennis that we have to do. Doesn't matter if we're the fastest player. Doesn't matter if we're the strongest, we have the best forehand. All that doesn't matter. What is the one thing that has to happen first for you to, get to, to show how fast you are or for you to show how good and how hard you can uh, uh, hit, a, hit, a, hit, hit a forehand or backhand? What's the number one thing that has to be done first? Raise your hand. Anybody have questions? Does everybody know what's the one thing that has to be done first in, in tennis? It looks like Suchi might have an answer. Oh, Suchi, okay. You have uh, you have to move. Okay, okay, okay. Let's say you're fast. Let's say you're 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 as fast as as, as Coach Romero. What if he's so that fast? But how about if he's not able to use the his ability of his quickness and his, his speed on the court? Because what's the one thing you have to do first thing you do? Does anybody ha have that answer? It's the one thing I can tell you that we don't spend enough time on, and I know in my career I didn't. It is the serve, guys. Come on. Nothing can't happen unless you put the ball in play, right? Right? Right. Right? Because, because every game starts with the serve or return a serve. Doesn't matter. You know, all that mobility stuff that we do or all those uh, uh, lines that we do, that don't matter. If you can't get the ball in play on a serve or if you can't return a serve back, because that's how you start every point. So at that time, so so that's what we're gonna kind of little take, take a little bit more on the serve today, and 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 I'm gonna take a little bit things out of the serve because there's so much to the serve that we can dissect it so much. But we're just gonna take one key element out of the serve. But before we go into that, we're gonna have a little tape that we're gonna have a little video that just gives us an introduction to the serve and kind of all the things that we're gonna be talking about. So, coach, you can go ahead and play it. National Manager and Head Coach for Team USA. Hi, my name is Jason Harnett, USTA's National Manager and Head Coach for Team USA's Wheelchair Tennis Team. Hi, I'm Jason Allen, USTA's Manager for Wheelchair and Technical. We have a great tip to help you understand the nuances of serving when working with an athlete with a disability. Serving is a critical part of tennis. That holds true in wheelchair tennis. It's important to understand your athlete's disability and what he or she can and cannot do from a balance standpoint and functional level. This will drive some of the techniques you teach them on the serve. Giving your athletes some options can lead to a sense of ownership of his or her game. You want your athlete to feel as though he or she has room for growth by using a new technique. Showing your athletes options to traditional overhead serves will open up their tennis world. They will see and taste what is possible. For some players' situations, serious adaptations might be needed. For others, an example might simply be tossing and serving from the same side. All this will show players that their creativity is limitless while increasing the desire to learn and improve. Showing your athletes options and how they start a point with the serve will ultimately help build their overall confidence and belief that they can continue to learn how to play the sport of tennis, but sport for life. For more tips and instruction, go to USTA.com. All right. How did everybody see that video? So, so uh, can everybody, I wanna, at this time, can, can you remove all the mutes? <clears throat> All right, guys. So, out of that little, little, little uh, blip about the serve, what are two things that are really interesting that you saw in that video? Kevin. Um, we'll have different ways to serve. And why is that? What, what was the one thing that they, that they stressed for us as disabled athletes? Why do we have different ways of serving? Raise your hand so I can pick. <laughs> Nicholas? Because Nicholas? Um, different people have different abilities. Exactly. We have to know 
our limitations and our abilities of that concerns of our disabilities and our function. That is absolutely because right here in the room, we have some that that we have to kind of think outside of the box, so to speak, and we have to play what works for us as individuals as tennis players. So what so for one thing is one of the uh, uh, players that you saw, uh, uh, for instance, is that someone couldn't even hold the ball and they had to adapt and learn to figure out, well, how do I still maintain a proper ball toss? Okay. Another way is not everybody has the ability to do a traditional over the head, a toss, uh, uh, and uh, uh, simple, the so underhand to uh, uh, serve is more adequate and it's uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, in the rules uh, as far as being able to do that adaptation. Again, for each adaptation, there's a specific little rules, so to speak, but once you find your way, it's, 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 it's gonna just like David said, it's gonna open up a whole new world and really open up the rest of the game because it's gonna be, give you the opportunity to play the game and start, okay? So in this instruction part, we're going to look at one specific thing. And we're going to look at the ball toss, okay? So we're not even worrying about hitting the ball. We're not even worried about even really having a racket in our hand, okay? But we really, really want to stress on the ball toss. And again, this is taking simple simplicity and basic stuff that we're taking it from, from very start. What's the start of a ball toss? Does anybody um, could what what's the one thing you gotta know about a ball toss? No fees. Huh? It's a tricky question. Well, how do you hold the ball? Duh! How do you like hold the this. ball? Bam! Wrong! You said like this. No! So you see a tennis ball here, right? Everybody hold up your tennis ball. Does everybody have your tennis ball? All right, well, guess what? When I started out, and I don't have a chance, I had an egg. Think of the tennis ball as an egg. So for that, look what I got here. I got a ping pong ball. Do you see how I hold the ping pong ball? I hold it with my fingers. So with your tennis ball, for those who can, start holding the tennis ball with just your fingers, not allowing the ball to touch your palm. See how my ball, the ball is not touching my palm? I'm always holding it with my fingers. And again, yeah. there's different ways of, and again, this might be a little bit, whoa, this kind of feels weird. But really we're breaking down to, again, this is the start of how to hold the ball when you're doing a ball top. Uh, and again, uh, uh, different ways. Uh, you could pretend like you're holding an egg, very delicate. For me, I brought uh, a ping pong ball, very delicate, very little, but still, I'm doing the same concept. I'm holding it with my fingers. And there's those different things you can play with. Like I still do it even to this day. If I have a tennis ball in my hand, I play with it. I, I see how many times I can roll it with their fingers. Can everybody do that? Can everybody try to with your ball with with their tennis ball? Roll the ball in this case with your fingers. Never letting it touch your palm of your hand. Then we can do that. Now, you're probably thinking, what does that have to do with the toss? What does that make sure? Well, here's the thing. When you're doing a ball toss, the, best, the number one thing is having a, 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 a toss that is an accurate and consistent toss. And again, depending with our disability and the different things that we have as far as uh, uh, pertains to our, our sports shares and all our straps, that's going to play into, into a lot. That's going to be a big, huge factor. But in this case, we're just bringing it down to the ball top and we're simply being able to hold it and toss it up and down, up and down, okay? And it's supposed to come down to our hand. And, wh and why we do the fingertip is that that eliminates, if we hold it like, like he was showing me earlier, like we hold it like a softball or a baseball, it tends to spin the ball. You don't want no rotation when it's up in the air. We want it nice and straight and high, all right? Because we always want it to come down to the same place. Does that make sense, guys? Because with that ball toss, that's the basic setup of where your hand is gonna hit if you're hitting an overhead serve. Uh -huh. now, now, for some of us, like Aurora,
that can't do that and has limitations. There's so many different other ways. For example, in the sport of wheelchair tennis, for those who can't uh, serve like that, they are allowed, and this is the only time they're allowed to have another person uh, uh, on the court with them, and they simply are there at the beginning on serve, when it's their time to serve, if they need to be, they have they can be on the court and they basically drop the ball for them. So in our, in our case, do you remember that format? We've done that, remember in the gym, where somebody's there dropping the ball in front of you and you're able to make contact? Well, once you start doing that and get more and more uh, 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 better at it, that is something that you can introduce if you want to start playing matches or start sit, playing any type of point uh, uh, competition. You're allowed to have a person come in and drop the ball for you, okay? Or in another case, like you saw in the video, uh, the gentleman with one arm. He only had one arm, no leg, no other arm. He had one arm, and he had to learn how he wanted to do it on his own, and he learned to toss the ball with his one limb and hit with that, at the same time with that same limb. Uh, uh, that's a gentleman from South Africa, I believe. Um, so again, there's so many various patients out there. It's, it's just phenomenal. But the bottom line is this. you got to have a perfect toss, and you got to have, you got to start to serve. So we got we learned how to hold the ball, right? Does anybody uh, remember to hold the ball with the fingertips? So now I'm going to take you to a lesson to where we can practice the ball toss. Now, how do we do a ball toss in our home? Well, this is where I see some of you guys are kind of laying down or, or kind of. So this is the time. Can everybody find? And again, it can be simply at your door. Find a door. A, a, a opening of your door, uh, uh, mm -hmm. door ledge. Does everybody know what that is? So wherever your door is, there, there's, a, there's a ledge right there. Find your opening of a door, okay? And I'm gonna go to mine. <laughs> so everybody get up, so I wanna make sure that everybody's moving and take your tennis ball, take your tennis ball and find somewhere where your uh, doorway, a doorway. Here. So, for mine, I got my doorway right here. So let me put my. Can everybody see this? So here's my doorway. I'm watching. I'll tell you what he says. <laughs> All right. Can everybody see my doorway? All right. Now, what you want to do is get, be in your chair, and you're you're trying to go right underneath your door ledge up here. Anybody see that? So that yeah. means the, depending depending on, it doesn't matter where your wheels are at, but when you look at you want to look at the you want to look at the door ledge. It it has to be directly above your eyes or above your head. Some people think, oh, does my wheels have to be a certain way? Or not necessarily, because everyone's gonna have a different door, like, door uh, everyone's gonna have a different width. But the key is making sure when you look up, you're looking straight up at the door. So yes, you're probably halfway in between. Does that make sense to everybody? So does everybody find a door ledge? Yeah. Right. Uh, now, if you're not able to have access, or again, if you're not able to move up and around, that's okay. We could still yeah. practice with ball talk, but the bottom line is well. you gotta have the ball yeah, in your hand. All right, so we're gonna practice the ball. Talk. Why do we use a ledge? If we were on a tennis court, we'd be at the gate. You know, the gate to come in on tennis courts, and this is an actual uh, 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 routine that we do with some of our players, especially our players that are learning to serve, to get them to have a uh, start off with a good ball talk. Because I'm going to begin my toss. Everybody's going to be different at this point of starting. Where do you start that ball top? Do we start in front of our stomach? Do we start it on the side of our wheel? Wherever that might be that's comfortable and you have the best balance, that's for you to decide. All right? Does that make sense? Everybody's going to start different as far as where they have the, the control, their most balanced. And again, 
this is going to change once you're uh, actually on the court and you're in your tennis chair and have all that strap. So right now it might feel a little weird, uh, a little bit unbalanced, but I guarantee you as long as you have the right technique of the top, uh, things will going to come together. So for me, I start on the side of my wheel and my wheel and my front caster. Since I'm a right, since I'm right-handed with my racket, I'm going to be tossing with my left hand. So for those of you that are holding your racket in your right hand, no. so obviously the ball toss is going to be with the left hand. And again, the starting point is anywhere that you have control. But we want to start, though, with holding the ball in our fingertips. Again, I use uh, uh, thinking of like an egg or something that's delicate, like a ping pong ball, and we're tossing it up, and we're looking up, and this is where the doorway is. This is where it comes into play, and I'm tossing it up, and I'm going down. Goes up, going down, going down. And even for me, do you see that? How I didn't even realize the height, and it comes right back. But see, it comes right back to my hand because it's so. I haven't been doing this for 30 years that it has to come back right to my hand, right to my hand. Does that make sense? And again, when you actually see the ball that moves in the air, it has no spin. It's almost like it's it's in a, a matrix. Uh, kind of a suspension. The ball's not moving at all. See that? Can everybody see that? So again, you're using that ledge. Why are we using that ledge? Because a lot of times we do the ball toss, and guess what? We flick in the back of our head, right? Or we flick it way up there, and, and we're trying to hit right above our head at, at 12 o'clock, and actually that ball toss is all over the place. Great. And we all know that feeling, right? Because we've all been at camp already out, outdoors, and that ball toss is tricky. So once again, this is a little example of how we can do that. So for that being said, hey, Ruben, why don't you put up that picture? And again, this is a more visual of exactly what I'm talking about. Let's put up that picture. So Serena, <laughs> Serena is my guy. Then do you see how her ball toss is, her hand is up and high? And one of the things I was saying is look at, pay attention to her fingers. Pay attention to her palm of her hand. You see how it's up and high? And you can almost see her fingers spreading apart. You see that? Because just like I was showing you, like holding something delicate, when you toss the ball up, you're, all you're doing is releasing the fingers. Yeah. You see that? Also, too, look at the extension. Same thing with us as wheelchair players. For us to have the best serve and the most uh, 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 function of our serve, we want to make sure that we're able to extend ourselves to the most uh, uh, accurate as far as giving us the most uh, uh, concentrated on our uh, uh, on our uh, uh, on our balance and, and, and the way how we can control our bodies in our chair. And so sometimes the ball toss, some sometimes they're higher than others. Sometimes. They're very short, again, depending to your limitation and your, your ability to extend. But here's in general how you want to ball top. And then lastly, as we're still looking at the picture, using that door edge, making sure that that ball top is always out in front. Does that make sense, everybody? Making yeah. sure the ball top is always in front. All right, you can take that picture down. So... Let's do a little challenge real quick. Let's see, out of everybody here, how many tosses we can catch under the doorway, or if you're not a doorway, it, it just has to be tossed above your head. And how many times out of all of us that are here, there's what, 13, 14 of us, that we catch it without dropping the ball? Or, in this case, without hitting the door ledge. So you're out if you can't catch it, and you're out if you hit the door ledge. All right, so let's all get ready and let's try a little challenge. Let's see if we can do it. All right, everybody underneath the door ledge. So, again, we're tossing the ball up high. We want to catch it above our hand with the same hand. Right now, we're not worrying about the tennis racket, we're just worrying about tossing it up above our hand, keeping it out in front, away from the door ledge if you're under a door ledge, and catching it with the same hand. Here we go. One. Two, three, four. Oh, good drive. Four, four, 
Five. Does anybody have five yet? Five. Who's that five? Five. Six. Is that seven? Eight. Nine. And we can go on and on. So if some of you guys are nice, go to me. I'm, I'm very on the ball. I'm, I'm not moving my arm with, at all when I'm catching the ball. It's coming right back to my hand. Even sometimes when I toss it too hard, it hits off the roof. And it's holding it's exactly back to where my hand is. So I can do this all day and I can do it all. And the thing is, I'm keeping the ball out in front of me. That is the number one thing for us as wheelchair players. You see a lot of uh, tennis, able-bodied tennis players. This is a misconception for us as wheelchair players. When we watch television, you see them arch that back. You see them get under there and they get that spin. Well, for us to maximize our strength and our ability, we get it when we're forward, when we're forward. Now we can still have that arch, but again, we want to emphasize them making contact forward, moving our front and our body forward. Again, with some of the equipment that we have, this is a little note, but that's where sometimes you see that back wheel comes into play for, for athletes that are on tennis court. Uh, uh, they're able to lean back a little and get that same rotation that's typically seen out of able body uh, tennis players with that arc. But again, if you watch the top wheelchair players that do that, they are making contact still in front. They're leaning back. When they make contact, and the, what I like to call, we're hitting the apex, the highest point of the ball, boom, they're going forward. Does that make sense, guys? And I guarantee you, if you guys could practice this a couple of times throughout your summer, I'm not even talking about every day. I'm telling you, once you get on the tennis court, or once you get back to camp next year, whoo, you're going to be a different player. And again, it's the one thing that we start of a game. So when you come to coach and say, hey, I just want to play, I just want to play, and if you got that down, I have no problem sending you to a court. But the thing is that if we can't get that serve in, man, it's going to make everybody a long day for everybody. How does that sound? Does everybody have any questions as far as the ball toss? And again, there's so many more things to the ball toss, but we just went over one simple thing. Of, I mean, the serve is the toss itself and how we hold it and the importance of getting the accurate toss out in front and hitting it on the highest point possible. Does that make sense? Does everybody have any questions pertaining to this, this uh, uh, activity on the ball toss? No? Okay. Well, lastly, you're going to follow me. I'm going, I'm going what I like to call the lab. I call my bedroom the lab. So we're going to go back to the lab, and we're going to end our session on uh, a group activity. You want to move back? You coming? Yeah. Oh, there you guys. How are we doing on time? Are we doing good on time, Coach Kerry? Fourteen minutes. All right. Perfect timing. Woohoo! All right. All right. So everybody can come back to their areas. Uh, if you guys were out on the door ledge. Ah. So, again, this is, uh, we just want to cover just a little bit what we just did the last 20, 20, 30 minutes of just basically the primary objective to my philosophy as far as tennis is making sure we use the things that we have uh, uh, in, from our home. Again, these are times where, you know, at least for me, I, 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 there was a time I hadn't seen my tennis rackets in, in, a, in a couple of weeks. And for someone like me that doesn't see my rackets on a daily basis, that's a huge difference for me. And everybody's a little bit different. But the bottom line is I wanted to make sure I get you guys all thinking of being proactive, thinking outside of the box, and just using the things that are in all of our homes. And all of our homes, you know, a little bit different, but using simple things. Um, one thing, going back to thoughts, I probably forgot. It's one of the things that another fun thing I wanted to say. See, everybody has a Dixie cup. Uh, just going back to the ball toss real quick. Here's another fun little activity to do 
with the ball toss, and that is catching the ball inside the Dixie cup, okay? And basically, you're, you can either have somebody toss the ball up high, but the bottom line is you're holding the Dixie cup in your hand, right, or any cup, and with the palms up, see, it's almost like I'm telling you, and you're catching the ball. So you can either do that on your own as far as you tossing it up on your own or having a friend, and you guys can rotate. And basically, the key is catching the ball. And there's little games like this that we've all seen, but again, people don't realize we are actually learning a function of the ball toss. And again, another simple activity of, of correcting how to hold the ball and keeping it up above. So I just want to make sure I covered that because I used to do that when I was a kid uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, starting tennis. I didn't even have a racket for the first, for six months. And we were doing things like this. And I was like, what's this? I thought we we're playing tennis. But again, but it really makes a difference of getting, getting that skill level and getting that good uh, uh, foundation. All right. So lastly, we're going to do our end up with one of the one things, again, that, uh, 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 that is so important as athletes. And this is the one thing that we don't realize. And I'm looking at my thing right here. And this is going to be a question. I'm going to start off with this. <clears throat> Everybody see this? <clears throat> so my question is, what's the one thing we, we have all done as a child to an elite athlete? There's something that we've, we've already all done. You guys probably don't even realize it. But whether you're a young child or, or, or an elite athlete, what is the one thing you think we've all done that we've all shared, even though we don't realize what we're doing? Does anybody can think that we've all that we've all done? And it doesn't matter where you're an athlete, it doesn't matter. It's one thing we've all done. Yeah, I, you know what? I even put hint. I put a hint. Look at my hint. You know what my hint is? Look, this also includes your parents as well. So even your parents, I'm telling you, have done this one thing. That's so crucial as, as a, well, for here for day two, to, to a sports and athlete. But what's the one thing? Does it, can anybody think? <clears throat> so it's a word called visualization. Can everybody see that? Now, everybody has different ways of visualization. But I like to look at it very simple. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, my one thing I loved uh, to do was to watch action movies and to play out the scenarios in the action movies when I was a kid. And I love kung fu movies. So I remember when I was a kid, every time I come home from a movie, I would jump off because I don't always jump off the chair. And I'd pretend it, and I would do those action moves. And I would, I would constantly repeat those moves that I saw. Even though I wasn't looking at them at the time because I was at home. I just saw them at the movie theater. But I had them stored in my head, okay? And that actually brought me a, a good, I mean, it was fun to do. Again, since some of you like to play cops and robbers, some places, uh, if your ladies like to be princesses and have tea parties, and whether you're doing it physically with, your, with using a uh, different age, it all comes from your mind, visualization. And people real, don't realize we've always been doing it, you know, but we don't realize the concept. We all do it in different ways, right? But we've all done it. We all have used our minds to take us to a place or to something that we're familiar, that we've seen or that we want to do. Like I wanted to be, a, a, I wanted to be Bruce Lee, right? So I was on the ground doing those C moves, right? But it's the same idea. Using uh -huh. that visualization, okay? And the ability to train and use your sensory muscles uh, to stimulate your brain. What do I mean to that? So this is how we're taking it to the things we used to do as a kid. To now we're going into an athlete and really honing in on this visualization and using some of the key concepts. And that is using our sensory, our abilities, a smell, touch, feel, 
right? All those sensory elements are so crucial in visualization to take us to a certain point, to a place, to a very uh, precise uh, 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 thing that in this case brings confidence, brings some type of security, happiness, okay? But it's something a little bit different that we take it to the next level where some people just use it at that, you know? Some people just think that when we get stressed out, we do breathing, you know, another concept is breathing. But a lot of people say, they, you hear the concept, taking ourselves out of the moment. And like for me, uh, when I would have a stressful time on the tennis court, I would want, I pretend I'm being at Disneyland and I'm on one of my favorite rides. One of my favorite rides was Splash Mountain. And I would taste the cold, wet water that would spray on me when you go down that big hill. I would listen to the yelling of the people as we're going down Splash Mountain. All those things, I can go on and on in detail and using those concepts of smell, touch, uh, 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 visualize, to take me to a certain point. And again, the more you do it, the more detailed you get, okay? But that's just one example using visualization as a very basic, take me to a happy place, okay? Everybody go off mute. Can somebody, uh, can, uh, uh, on the show of hands, raise your hand, but just somebody give me, uh, 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 if they have a happy place, that sometimes if they're having a stressful day, uh, not a day, because again, just, just, just have the same in sports. It's gonna be everyday life, uh, stressful days, um, like rough days at school, you know, oh, I fell out of my chair today. I feel bad, you know, I fell out of my chair or something. But just something that, just for us as individuals, can anybody share maybe what's your special place or maybe something that you like to find yourself doing uh, 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 to take yourself out of that? Ernie raised or, his or hand. Man. Who has that? Sorry. Ernie, Ernie did. Oh, go ahead. What's your place? Um, my room. <laughs> your room? Okay. Now, give me more to your room. Why do you like your room? Um, I don't know. My trombone's in here. And... Okay, how about this? Using what I mentioned, smell. To, can you give me examples? Is maybe there's a certain smell to your room that you maybe are familiar with? You know, and, and you're, and that's only, that only you can know. Is there something visually that you like to see in your room? I mean, give me some examples using those, uh, if you can. Of what makes your room that special place for you? And there's no wrong answer. So anything, you, there's no wrong answer. But give me something a little bit more detailed. Probably my laptop. Okay. So there's something specifically that you know that's in the room that you gives you relaxation or fun. That's good. That's good. Can anybody give me somebody else? Somebody else give me an example of a place. Go ahead. And it, um, it was like it was a trip that I went with my friends and stuff was Knott's Berry Farm because like it was like um really fun with all the rides and stuff with kids like, being happy around like made me. Now that's a good one. So was it a family trip? Um, my family and our friends. Okay. So what did that make you feel being, okay, so you went to a Disney, but give me a little bit more details. How did it make you feel being around with your family and friends? Happy? Yeah, like really excited and um, like that. Uh, let me ask, is there a certain maybe family member or friend that you actually ah. like to hang out that was kind of stood out or that, oh, I hope that person goes on our trip? Is there yeah, someone that comes to mind? Yeah, you, know, you don't have to say the name, but is there someone that comes to mind? My friend, yeah. And that you, okay, and then you can see visually, you can see that friend of yours or that family member That's riding next to you in the car, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Is there anything that comes to play? Again, going to your favorite place to, to your trip, you guys, uh, would you guys like sing songs in the car? Would you guys talk about certain things? Would you guys make, I mean, Give me some more detail. So we're taking uh, what I'm doing, guys. I'm taking it one step further. Again, having them go back and visualize. Is there something is there more more detail? Candid? Is there something more detail? Anything else? 
Um, oh, wait. What, what did you say? I'm uh, talking about the car ride. I'm talking yeah. about you going to your favorite destination. You're there with your favorite person that's next to you. You're there. Uh, just something maybe you guys are having a snack. Maybe something you guys eating that you guys know that you never get to eat other than on this special trip. I mean, something like that. I'm just giving you examples. And again, I want everybody to start thinking. And this is the way how we start using our mind and visualization. Okay. Okay. So basically, we just want one basic step. And, we're, and again, the more we do this, the more it gets so much easier and it comes more. But if we don't really look at it at this type of way, then it's never going to help us and it's never going to pertain to what it needs to be as far as us as an athlete and on the sports field. And again, this visualization could be for wheelchair basketball, it could be for, for archery, it could be visualization. And you, want, you see that bullseye right in front of you. You may have not even shot the bow and arrow, but you see it already. So this all pertains to, to, to sports and visualization. The next step, though, yeah. is lastly what we're going to end on, and we're going to end on this. Visualization also pertains to an exact detailed uh, 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 task, okay? So we're taking it to one step, okay? Before, we are just using it as taking us to a happy place and start using our sensory skills, right? But now, we're going to do a specific task. So we're going to end off with our thing today is that we're going to go around and it's almost going to be telling a story. Everybody, that's their turn. When I point, they're going to have to come some details about what I start off with. Okay, so I'm going to start off my task and we're going to go one by one, but you're going to continue the task. Okay, but how do we do that task? We got to start from, from, from first step, right? So my task is this. I want to serve my first ace. An ace is a serve that is unreturnable. How do I do that? How do I do that? Who wants to go first? Just one simple thing. Nothing's going to be, there's no wrong answer. But again, it's being as detailed as possible. And I'll start off. I'll, I'll be first. So I want to get an ace. Guess what? I got to find a sport chair. Simple enough. I got to find a sports chair. So finding the right sports chair for me is going to help me hit that ace. Coach Karen, you go next. All right, I'm going to – actually, I'm going to pass it to Suchi. She okay. had her hand up first. Um, you said finding the right sports chair. I say finding the right racket. Good, good. Finding the right racket. So we're getting ourselves ready, making sure we've got the right equipment. Great. Who's next? Who's next? Because I can't see everybody on my screen, so I'm going to point to Aurora. I haven't heard from you, Aurora. How are you doing? All right. So what's the one thing that you think you want to get that's going to actually help you to hit the proper and best serve you've ever had? And I've seen those good serves that you had. I've seen you hit that ball. <sighs> so I know what I already know. I've seen it. I can already have, uh, know what it might, but you tell me. What's the couple of things that you need to have happen to have you hit the right server, the best serve you can? You mean, Albia, how about, Laura, remember those times where sometimes I'm really fast and I'm trying to wrap you up and I wrap you up really crummy and I don't know, I give you a quick wrap and sometimes you look at me and you turn to Coach Karen, he's like, he didn't do my rap right. And, and you know, sometimes I don't do, when I wrap your hand, a, and I don't do a good job sometimes, you have to go to Coach Karen and say, can you rewrap this? Right? Sometimes you do. So, that would it be wrong. maybe having the best okay. rap? You do it again, or I'm Practice muted. A lot. Practice a lot. She says, practice a lot. Got it. Good job. <laughs> I accidentally muted him and I can't get him off mute. Yeah, I'm, I'm clicking unmute as well. Anthony, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> trying to unmute you, Anthony. You might have to press your button. <sighs> yeah.
You had it there for a second. All right. There you go. Okay, good. Sorry. Um, so uh, as I said, that's great. Or, uh, you know, practice. Practice is probably the key to everything. And as I was mentioning real quick, the most famous quotes ever is Mr. David Wagner. He's the number one ranked disabled winter tennis player, quadriplegic, Paralympic gold medalist. They ask him, how is he so good? And you know what he says? He simply has a roar said, simply, I hit a thousand and thousand and thousand and thousand of balls. Simple. He hits a thousand balls every day. And so the same thing that you just said, you know, right, correct. So who's next? Who's next? So we got a chair, we got a racket, we're practicing. What's next to make sure that we hit the rim? Again, something detailed, something maybe that uses what we went over some of our centuries, some of the things that you think that we need to, to do in a, to get into that best serve. Olivia, what's, what's next for you? Give me something, give me. So we, so we got our equipment, we know we got to practice, but what's next to making sure that we hit the, high, the best serve we can? Like making sure your chair is in the right position. Okay. Maybe if you need okay, to so be a little left or a little right. Awesome. You're working on the same wavelength. Whoop, whoop. So I hear, have here. Positioning. Can everybody see my tennis court? Okay. She's hit it correct. Now we got our stuff. We're on the court. Again, we're thinking. Visualize this. We're on the court. This is the baseline. Does everybody remember the top part? Baseline with the red thing. Positioning. One of the key things is that even though you know that we have to serve it across, crisscross into the other box, guess what? We have this whole side of baseline we can be at. A lot of people think that when we serve, whether it's singles or doubles, we have to stay in a specific space or area. Not necessarily. As long as you stay on your half to whatever side you're serving, you can see the cross, you know, you're serving, you, know, you can see the diagram, we're here on the baseline, right? We're serving crisscross. Let's say we're serving right to left. Guess what? We don't have to be right there in that center. We could be anywhere as far to the doubles, doubles line. We could be positioned here. We could be positioned there. We could be anywhere across that baseline on that half of that court for us. So we can play with it. And a lot of players can get that. And again, that has to do with what type of serve you want or some of your limitations, or some of your, your strengths, okay? But that's great, Olivia, positioning. So now we've got our positioning. A last, let's go three more. What's next? Uh, Nicholas, you look like you're, you're, you're styling and relaxing over there. Nicholas, give me give something. So we got our positioning, okay? What's next, you think? Being well hydrated to keep focused. Okay, so we're going back to making sure that we have all our necessary equipment as far as, you know, things that we need to keep us with, in this case, hydrated. Okay, so this again can go on the, the element of equipment. And again, that's one of going back to one of my key words today, being proactive, right? You can't rely on mom and dad to always have our cold drinks ready for us, right? Sometimes when we're on the courts, we have to be, be, be uh, uh, proactive and making sure, just like I can't, not losing our water bottle making sure we all know where our equipment is, where we put it away, and where we need to get uh, out as far as we're done. So great, so having uh, water, uh, and making sure that you're hydrated is very important. Great, what's next? And again, let's get more detailed, guys. Let's get more, it's all great, but let's hone it in. Let's get more detailed. Okay, well, who's next, who's next? Uh, where's my screen? Uh, ah, uh, Kumaka. Uh, Oh, look out. I didn't see you over there. <laughs> What'll be next, buddy? The perfect, the perfect toss. Okay, now give me, so come on, you've done this before. So I'm going to be a little bit more, give me a little bit more detail. What, the perfect toss, what does that mean for you? Like, throw it up in the air, like high, so I can hit it. How high? Show me how high. Show me by raising your hand. Show me how high you need it. How high? Like up here. You can just show me by your hand. So yeah. you, I see, I see. There's a little bend to your elbow. Do you want that much bend? No. Or do you want it to extend? You tell me. When it's straight. Straight up. So you want that? Okay. See now that, that. Show me again. Now that's a full extension. That's totally different than showed me earlier. That's good. So you like, and you got that great length. You're just like me with people with long arms. We want to use that length, right? Yeah. 
So that's great. So he showed me visually length. He likes length. He likes uh, uh, probably if I see your swing, you like that big clock, what we call the clockwork uh, type of rotation. So that's great. All right. Okay. Lastly, we're going to end up <laughs> last thing. So we're finally getting to the point where we're hitting the ball. We got our equipment. We got our water. We know we got to practice. What else? What's the last thing that we want to say? And uh, you tell me, Devin, buddy. I haven't heard from you. He's on mute. Um, maybe like practicing, like if you need to hold your chair when you're like swinging. Okay. Okay. Give me a little bit more. What, 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 a little bit more detail to practice. Like for you, for example, uh, what would that, what does that mean? Like, like when I, like after you get like a good toss, then like. Okay. Okay. So would that be maybe pertaining to balance, knowing your balance issues? Yeah. Okay. What you do after you toss that ball, mm -hmm. where your hand goes. Some people like to put their hand back on their lap and make sure it gets back on their lap as quick as possible because they're trying to hold their balance or they're trying to, uh, because, you know, they're both of their limbs, uh, some people's hands are both off the wheels. So you're trying to kind of maintain balance. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. So balance would probably be uh, more of a detailed uh, uh, element to your serve that you would want to make sure that you pay more attention to. All right. Does anybody else have anything else they want to share pertaining to our little story? So you want the, the object was how, what do we need to do? And again, we're visualizing what needs to be done for us to be able to hit our most accurate serve and hardest serve and, 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 and serve for us as individuals. So she's that way. Concentration. Concentration. So that's one of the things that we're, visualization falls under that. So with, when you say concentration, so we're doing this visualization, right? Question, are we doing this on the tennis court just before we play? Are we doing it? Are we doing it in front of a lot of people? Are we doing it during a, a, a camp, camp, camp lunch hour when we're talking to our friends? We're doing it during practice. Uh, practice with the group or or as individuals. So pertaining to your you word concentration, this is very key. Concentration, we want concentration enable us to you to be able to visualize with meaning is that we want to first to get to that point where we're able to visual do use visualization. We're basically on our own. It's it's a it's 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 a it's something that we do by ourselves. Uh, we want to find ourselves in a quiet, uh, a secure place. Usually it's done in our bedrooms. Usually it's done uh, 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 alone in the locker rooms. Usually it's done uh, away from your actual uh, uh, court, whether it's a basketball court, a gymnasium. It's away. It's something that you only do because it goes back to what Soshi stated. You want to be having concentration to be able to be as detailed as possible in your mind. Because again, everything that we're said and that we ran this, this whole uh, little storytelling, was simply we weren't doing it physically, we were talking and describing it. And this would be the same thing instead of us sharing it, you would be sharing it within your head. And actually, whether you talk out loud, whether some people write in a journal, that's another example, or in this case, we're visualizing in our heads and we're replaying. And once we get a task that we know and we can be as detailed as possible, guess what? We continue to replay that task and it becomes a strength uh, element for us when it has pertained to our visualization and mental toughness. Does everybody understand what? So basically we took very specific techniques as far as visualization and in this case, we had a story, but basically we're being detailed. We're using our sensory motor skills, usually touch, uh, smell, taste, and some of the things that we did earlier 
where we started is we started of just that happy place. And we all shared what's that happy place. So those are all parts of visualization, guys. And again, it can all be done away from the court, away from the gymnasium, away from the weight room. It can be done right from your in-home, right from your bedroom, right from your kitchen table. You don't have to have a tennis ball. You don't have to have a basketball. You don't necessarily be in a sports chair. And we're working our mind. And we're working our mentalization and making sure that it is strength and it's as powerful as our abilities that we do physically. How does that sound, guys? Did everybody have a good time so far? Yeah. A lot of stuff. We didn't even use a tennis racket today, right? So, two last questions we want to start off with. Number one, give me an example of what we did from the home that we uh, uh, that we used uh, to uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to to uh, to start our our our, our to get us uh, going in our strengthening. Can anybody tell me what we did today? Give me one example. That's a good question. Anybody raise their hand? Sochi. Just a recap. We did um, the rubber band warm up. Then we did, um, along with that, we practiced our forehand using um, the rubber band. And then we worked on our um, serves. And okay, okay, but, but, but basically yeah. the first thing was we use our band, yeah. right? To, to get to, 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 to get ourselves as a, as a, yeah. as a little uh, a workout before we start, right? Stretching, a little free, 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 uh, free a stretch type of thing, using bands. But one thing, make sure we, that you understand, we're using the elements that we use around our household. We're using things that are a part of our household, things that we not necessarily need to get <laughs> or need to have if you were to be on a sports court, okay? Using things that's available. And then lastly, what was the one thing that we talked about as far as the serve? So she already said it. What's the one thing we just talked about? So she already said it. Everybody can say it. We worked on the toss, right? We worked on the toss. And then lastly, we did a fun little group activity and we gave you a little example of two ways of visualization. One, taking you to a happy place using our sensory motor skills and two, having a specific task and being able to be detailed as possible in conducting that, that specific task in your head so you're able to visualize it and replay it in your mind time after time and it becomes actually a, a, a type of strength training for your mind as well. So those are the two things of visualization. Guys, does anybody have any questions Anything that pertains to tennis, any questions you have for me personally, or just anything in general, right. this is the time. Anybody? Did anybody really have a good time today? Yeah? <laughs> All right, guys. All right, then. Well, then, thank you. Coaches out there, Coach Carrier, Coach Romero, does anybody have anything to uh, end with on your end, guys? Coaches? You thank you. There? Thank you. And Coach Anthony, we love. Okay, well, thank you guys. Yes, and I'll see you later you. today. Have fun at lunch. And we'll see you at uh, Coach's, uh, uh, Coach's uh, uh, talk later on this afternoon. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. I love, I love, I love, I love. We'll All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. <laughs> Driving at 12 o'clock. Join us. Woo-woo. Driving. I don't know how to get off this thing. <laughs>